So your session skeleton, this is uh, essentially what you, you should expect from one of our training sessions. A soft tissue work, your three to five, 10 minutes max foam rolling, that's it. Okay, that is it. You wanna incorporate a couple breathing or posture exercises. Typically we do one to two dynamic warm up exercises. You're gonna have three, seven, three to seven of those. I don't think you're ever gonna have less than four, less than five. Uh, but you probably will usually have six to seven exercises that are going to address your major issues. And that's going to be key here because the lifts are going to focus on your your weaknesses, your weak spots, your leak points, right? And we're going to throw in some of these exercises that allow the, the muscles around this weakness to uh, to start to get active here. That's going to set you, set you up for success because... The, the strength program comes next, and the first couple exercises, you're going to have the most explosive exercises. Think like power, jumping, uh, and then we're going to start to move into some strength and correctives. And the last couple, we're going to have a postural challenge uh, that's going to have rotary stability built into it. So think like a bird dog. Think a a, uh, a banded plank where you're going to uh, take that band and pull out to the side and fight that uh, rotation from the hips and shoulders, stabilization of the shoulder during planks, things like that. That's what you're going to see there. That, in a nutshell, is the whole the whole session. But let's dive into it a little bit more and let's see what we got. All right, rolling areas. Typically, you're going to – the areas to, to include the front of the shins, the, the quads, the hams, the glutes, chest, lats, upper back, thoracic – extension on that foam roller um, front of the shins this is a good one for the the runners uh, cyclists as well uh, you want to go on the area that's not the bone again we never roll uh, joints or bones we only roll muscles and you can you can do the in between your your shin and your calf as well uh, you're gonna have tight cat excuse me tight calves but these are just the, the typically the most popular ones right here. Um, not to say that you can never roll your foot, you can never roll your your uh, your calf. Um, but again, this is a great starting spot for your rolling. There's a little bit of a difference between foam rolling for a warm-up and foam rolling for a recovery for a warm-up. It's not going to be super long. You're going to spend 30 seconds on each location, four to six locations, again, backing up to here. All right. Four to six locations. The goal is to kind of loosen you up a little bit, I increase that blood flow, increase the muscle resting length, and trigger that, that sympathetic nervous system and get you ready to go for your session. Foam rolling for recovery, it's going to be a little bit longer. Think about a minute per location, five to, I would argue, up to 20 locations, depending on when you put that movement session in there. Typically, five to 10 locations. Uh, what you're doing is restoring that muscle length, increasing the blood flow to that area, removing waste, triggering the parasymp parasympathetic nervous system in here. Um you do want to do this. You don't want to do it too much. Uh, think uh, like going to a massage and you come out and you just feel super loose and ready to go. Uh, know when to put your recovery sessions in here. Uh, my favorite times to do these recovery sessions are after a long run. So I'll do my long run in the morning and then at nighttime I'll do one of these sessions while I'm watching TV, while I'm listening to a podcast, anything like that. And that really allows my body to recover, and I know that I won't be doing another high-impact sport the next day, and it's going to allow me to recover without opening myself up to a lot of injuries that can happen after that. Next up is our breath work. You're going to have one to two exercises over here. These should only take you about 10, maybe 15 seconds. Okay, uh, You're going to do a two to four second hold. At that, at that max point, four to six seconds full exhale through your mouth and from the bottom of your stomach up. Super important that you push out that air from the bottom of your stomach, really working that diaphragm in there. Some of these examples include crocodile breathing, sphinx, sphinx breathing. There's a number of different ones you can do. These are the most popular ones. Uh, third step is our dynamic movement. We're going to address your major imbalances. Uh, Four to six, four to seven exercises. Uh, 
We're only going to change these typically every couple of months here because we really are going to set up a plan that's important for you and focused on your weak weaknesses and phase goals. If you uh, if you really are doing an upper body and lower body focused lifting session, uh, you're going to need an upper body and a lower body dynamic warm up just to set yourself up for success so you don't injure yourself. Uh, these are going to be moves that you struggle with. We're going to start off with one to two sets of three to five reps of each different one. Uh, as you gain better strength, we're going to move this up into one rep of uh, eight, 12, 15 repetitions here. And again, this is not happening overnight. This is a, a progression. It's not happening over the course of one week, two weeks. We are building you up consistently and uh, not allowing you to get injured through this massive jump, okay? Uh, after you're done with your dynamic warm-up, you should be you should have a little bit of, of a sweat going. Sometimes we are are out of breath a little bit, or we just need a we feel like we need a little bit of a recovery. And if you don't arrive at the end of this dynamic warm-up feeling this way, then you need to do it again, or you need to change up your session or it's change up your targeted movements. Because if you're not then you can't go cold into lifting right away, and that's wasting time. It's wasting valuable time that we do not have. And it's also not warming your muscles up to, to allow them to get the most out of your session, which is what we want. We don't want you doing sessions for no good reason. Uh, there should be an order to this. Typically, the, uh, the first two are going to be short, and they're going to be uh, slow. Think like ballerinas, side lunges, karaoke's, figure eight drills, uh, the next two to the next exercises, exercise three and four, they're going to be related to creating proximal stif stiffness to produce distal motion. Beginners think like bird dog. Uh, we're going to do shielded breathing. We're going to do a side laying, straight leg lift, clamshells, half clamshells, black burns, incline bench wise, prone glute activation. Uh, in the intermediate or advanced, we're going to take these exercises and just go to level two, level three, make them a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. Obviously, do not start out super e or super hard. The first one, uh, you want to start out medium and then build yourself up through this dynamic warm up. Exercise five and six are going to be low level plyometrics. Uh, you can even incorporate different exercises in here that are going to allow you to increase some of that training volume in the movements that we're doing for that day. So think like low level plyometrics, jump rope, light bounding, skipping, light focal movements, uh, like a light goblet squat for technique, looking what you, you need to identify when you're doing your movements, single leg, kettlebell deadlifts. If you're doing an upper body focused workout, think your wall scap slides or wall angels, wall spinal stabilization, um, all kinds of cool things here. Typically three to 15 reps, two to four days a week for these ones. Just another quick slide on the dynamic warm-up. It's only going to last 8 to 10, 8 to 12 minutes, 10 minutes. You're going to start general, then you're going to get gross, then you're going to start to get specific, you're going to hit your targeted areas, and then you're going to start to move into exercises that are going to be important for your program that day. Then you're going to end on full body coordination movements. Uh, super important that you go through this just because you don't want to do the inverse and open yourself up to a little injury right after that roll or right after that rolling and breath work. So start off slow, easy, and then move and change into what you will be doing that day. Structuring of the main sets of the workout. So you're going to group two or three exercises together. A1, A2, maybe A3 depending on who you are and where you are in your phase or where you are in your training. You're going to do A1. If this is the first one, you're going to do a plyo or explosive movement done first, then you're going to do a corrective or balance exercise immediately after that. If there is no A3, then just move right back into A1, A2, A1, A2, A1, A2, then you're going to rest and recover based off of the guidelines and what phase you are in, then you're gonna repeat for B, D, or B, C, and possibly D if there is a D. Make sure you check your, uh, your workouts. Again, you're gonna move quickly from one exercise then the next, and then you're gonna rest afterwards. 
That's the big key here, resting afterwards. So one, and you're going to get some rest at that second or third exercise because the first one's going to be the main one. The second exercise in your set is going to be a corrective, postural, whatever, balance exercise. And then you're going to get recovery doing that, and then you're going to move back into A1 or B1, C1, D1. Rest periods, 90 seconds or less, are going to push your training to be more metabolic in nature. Well, I think back a couple slides ago, we talked about that. Two to four minutes, it's going to put you into the more hypertrophy and max strength. Um, think back to the hypertrophy. Uh, there, was a, a, there was a bullet on that slide that said move towards the max strength side of things. And the three to seven minutes, push your training more towards the neurological changes. That's what we're talking about. So maybe you only rest for two minutes at the very beginning of that hypertrophy phase and you move out to that four minutes in between sets uh, pushing towards that max strength side of things as you get later in your hypertrophy phase just so there's not a big shock of how you're supposed to do things later on in that max strength sessions. <laughs> okay so this is just a breakdown of uh, imagine power is the A set of exercises. Power, plyometric or exercises movements done first but you have to have ample rest in between these if they are exclusively power. Because if they're not, then you're going to open yourself up to injuries uh, or just excessive wear and tear and breakdown on you. For these ones, uh, for beginners, you're definitely going to have lighter weights for sure. If we are doing an explosive or speed component to these, the percentages of our one rep max, they're going to be way down. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the next B exercises, set of exercises, they're going to be the major movements that need work or the goal of that phase for you. C and possibly uh, possibly B as well. Uh, these are going to be the fundamental five over here, even though there's six. The fundamental six, you're going to pair these. Uh, if you pair these with an explosive strength move, you're, you're going to need a short break to stimulate that uh, to get that nervous system ready to get excited. If you pair these with a static exercise, what that essentially is doing is that's teaching your muscles on the opposite side of the joint to relax during that movement. Again, a lot going on here, but know yourself as an athlete. A, know what you need to progress on, know what your limitations are, and lastly, know where you are in your training cycle. Do not go... Uh, to very explosive, very high-end power. If you haven't done that hypertrophy, or anatomical adaptation, hypertrophy, and then max strength, okay? Do not do that. Know where you are, know where you've been, and know what you need to work on as uh, an individual. The last part of your main session is gonna have a rotary stability component. Uh, we, we talked about some of these earlier. Think a bird dog, uh, things like that. Think a plank where you, you take a band and you pull, or a... Uh, a dumbbell, something like that, and you're doing a, uh, you're pulling that dumbbell through underneath you, back into that plank, uh, without rotating uh, or unstabilizing yourself in through that movement. That's going to allow you a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits. Think especially on uh, the swim and the run right there. So that's going to help a ton with your body awareness and body balance. Tempo, you can play around with tempo if you are a more advanced lifter. Typically, um, if you're just starting out, what it's going to turn into is a 2010. Uh, we'll talk about some of these in a second, but let's go back up to the first one, the 3131. There's four numbers here. The first number is the amount of time it takes you to go from a starting position to the uh, middle position. So for instance, let's say we're doing a squat. This three is the amount of time it takes you to go from standing to the bottom of your squat. That next number, the one, is how much time you hang out at that bottom position. The third number, in this case it's a three, is the amount of time it's going to take you to go from that bottom position back up to standing in that squat. And that last number is how much time you're going to hang out at that starting position. So there's four numbers here that you need to know. Uh, there's three, four different ones we'll talk about the first one is this 3131 tempo. Uh, this is for learning the movement control, core control, prepare the body for heavier, more explosive training. 
It's a great place to start your, your training cycles in the fall and the winter. It's also a good spot for you to come back to uh, during your mid-season strength for people who travel a lot because uh, we're going to be doing bands, we're going to be doing dumbbells, things like that. Uh, next one up is a 2 one, one, one. This is for your speed and power development. Uh, you're going to do this in the early and late base period as well throughout the riding and racing season as it allows to train power and explosiveness. So when you do this, just keep in mind that your power and explosiveness, the weight shouldn't be super heavy. That's why I'd say 2 one, one, one. Okay. Next one is uh, starting strength and power. It's a 2 five, one, one. So a 5, a huge, huge hold at the bottom of that position. Used for starting strength at, for intermediate advanced athletes, hand cleans, uh, hands on hips, jumps from the bottom, things like that. There's a high risk of injury, which is why we only use about 30% of our one rep max here, just because of that 5 second hold down there. Uh, so just keep that in mind here. Self-paced tempo, if you're one of those people who say, you know what, I'm not really going to focus on that. This is my first time through the whole routine. Uh, I just want to do it on my own. Typically what a self-paced tempo turns into is a 2-0-1-0. And that's, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, the most important thing is that you don't rush it and really focus on your technique. If you do rush it, then bad things are going to happen here. So just keep that in mind with a self-paced tempo. Uh, explosiveness, powers, jumps, we're going to use submaximal loads uh, that allow you to move fast and well. Big, big word right there, well. It really focus on that technique here. Uh, there's different types. You can do body weight, weighted exercise, Olympic lifts. If you are doing the Olympic lifts, uh, keep in mind that you don't have to do these Olympic lifts from the ground. You can stack these up onto different platforms. Uh, and what that does is that decreases the risk of injury for you. Uh, so just keep that in mind. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do here. Strength and correctives. Think uh, uh, your B, C exercise or sets of exercises here. There's going to be less power here, but it's going to be more focused on your needs and imbalances. Typically, you're going to see a lot of squats, exercises that involve coordination and stability. And you're going to pair this uh, with correctives that allow for better range of motion and control. So think a, uh, say we're doing a, a lat pull down. Right, so you're going to do your lat pull down, and then afterwards we'll have you roll on your chest. Okay, we'll do some some releasing of the chest. Again, it's not going to be super long because we're not rolling for recovery. We're rolling during our session, so it's only going to be about 30 seconds in there. After those 30 seconds, we're going to have you go right back to that lat pull down, and what that's going to do is that's, that's going to allow these chest muscles to kind of relax a little bit and allow better range of motion, so you can get into a better power position for your lat pull down and hopefully engage more muscle fibers. Uh, last part, usually the D set. Uh, this is the postural challenges and rotary stability. We put this at the end of the session because we want to challenge your core stability. Um, a lot of programs do the inverse of this and put this at the beginning, but I would argue that it needs to go at the end just because uh, a lot of times we need this postural in rotary stability at the end of our events right here. These aren't going to be super heavy weighted, if at all. So what that does, that allows us to just stabilize and actively keep everything together for the duration of our session. And that translates really well out of the weight room uh, into the swim, bike, run, endurance event, whatever. Okay, that translates really, really well. Uh, typically, you're only going to do two to three sets of as many reps as you can do with great technique. So over the weeks, over the months, say you're always ending on a bird dog. Okay, When you do your bird dogs, actively count and write down how many you were able to get through. And as the weeks go by, this number should be increasing with proper form, should be increasing. And if it's not, then we need to identify what else is going on to allow you to progress. An example of some of these are suitcase carries, farmer carries, uh, front plank and reach, TRX row with knee lift, bird dogs, ball of press, all kinds of good stuff here.